welcome to today's devotional. We find such joy in this time with you every morning, looking at the Word of God and wondering what God has to say to us today. Our scripture reading for today comes to us from the very end of Genesis, chapter 50, beginning at the 15th verse. Hear now the word of the Lord. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. And then his brothers also wept and fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. In order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was in high school and college, I was head over heels crazy for a boy I grew up with. I decided that this boy was all I wanted, all I needed, and I would pray that God would make him mine. Luckily, God knows better. As the country singer Garth Brooks sings, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. My life is full of times when my plans fell apart and something more meaningful, more beautiful emerged. If I'd married that boy, I wouldn't have known the true love and companionship I have with my husband. And while I might have children, I wouldn't have these children. God intends good for us, and whatever plans we might have, God has God's own plan for our lives. I suppose in a similar way, we can note plans others have for us, plans the world seems to have for us that are misaligned with the life God longs for us to live. The pursuit of pleasure, the realities of addiction, abusive and destructive relationships, the coming to the lie that we aren't worthy, or the lie that we're so capable that we have value and identity other than the one we have in God the lie that we are in charge of it all. And in a very real way, other people hurt us, wish us harm, do us wrong. None of this is so overt, thanks goodness, that we have our siblings throw us in a pit or sell us into slavery. But the brokenness of the world is most certainly evident in all our lives. These plans of the world that seek to destroy us, at times they can feel like they are driving the story of our lives. It can feel like life is conspiring against us. This is a major theme in the Old Testament. In the Psalms, those lamenting cry out against those who play an evil against them while also, while also resting in the certainty that God's plans will win in the end. In the 50th Psalm, we read, Thou hast multiplied thy wondrous deed and thy plans toward us. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord has plans for me. Joseph's assertion that God intended the actions of his brothers for good gives voice to the truth that God's intent will overcome human intention and that God's intent can work in and through our own misguided plans or the plans of others. This passage at the conclusion of Joseph's story it certainly suggests that we can and should trust the plans of God. We should trust that God intends good for us. For me, trusting God's promises and intentions for my life has been strengthened by acknowledging the ways in which God's plan for my life and for me has been revealed in my life. My parents divorced when I was about 10 years old and 
As is often the case, this was devastating. And for many years, I thought that their marriage holding together was the correct plan. And I would, in my mind, try to rewrite history to imagine different choices leading to a different outcome. It seemed like a good plan gone wrong. But over the course of my life since then, something wonderful has happened. I had not just one, but two amazing stepfathers, and with them siblings and cousins and windows into whole other worlds. Being a part of a blended family has taught me that love is not finite. It doesn't have to be finite. It is self-perpetuating. Love begets love. And I sure do love my stepfather, Frank. What a joy it is to see my mother so happy, and he's smart and funny and incredibly kind. He is a wonderful dad, and he has an amazing family, which is now my family. My children are overjoyed to have so many wonderful cousins. I thank God for Frank. I can't imagine our lives without him. God has been at work in my life and from what seemed like the ashes of the end of one marriage, what seemed like death, God has worked such abundance and love and joy. God can work through anything, any pain, any loss, any poorly considered human plan. And God can and does bring life. God is making all things new. And God has been doing so since the beginning of time. God has been working since Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden on one thing, to restore, to heal, to bring goodness to his beloved creation. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul wrote, We know that in everything God works for good with those that love him, who are called according to his purposes. God works for good. May we trust in the promise spoken to the prophet Jeremiah. I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place for I know the plans I have for you, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Let us pray. Gracious and steadfast God, we know there is nowhere you are not. We know there is no part of our life or our stories in which you are not actively working for our good. Forgive us our doubt. Encourage us to rest in the assurance of your love and your care. And help us to be instruments of your peace and healing in the world, reminding others that your plans are for their good. Amen. <music>